from JKIA Ouko felt what most young children feel at home whenever your mother tells you kuja tu hakuna kitu nitakufanya then when you enter she locks the door she changes uh, you 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 really regret trusting her Ouko had been warned in the USA not to come back to Kenya I think he had that feeling then that uh, he made a mistake coming back to Kenya but all the same he played along he went to you know from a foreign visit he had to visit the president at State House for a debriefing debriefing is reviewing the trip talking it and uh, discussing it uh, Ouko used that opportunity to seek for permission to go and visit his constituents. And then uh, there was a foreign trip, which Ouko, so he was saying that between today and the day I'll be having that, such and such a trip, uh, let me go to my constituency and visit the people. Those days, members of the cabinet were MPs. So they did their uh, cabinet work. At the same time, they were members of parliament. So he used that opportunity to plan a few things, including uh, he organized with prominent Luo leaders to visit them and discuss his situation. The prominent Luo leaders included uh, John Anguka, the then district commissioner in Nakuru, also included Ezekiel Oyugi and others. That is plan A, if I can call it that. He also organized to meet Mr. Peter Kibiego Lagat, who was then the district commissioner for Kericho. Peter Kibieko Lagat is somehow related to President Moy. We have a person called Ruben Chesire and Zipora Kitonyi. Both are children of, they are siblings, they are children of the same mother and father. Their mother is related to Moy, so they treat Moy as their maternal uncle. Peter Kibiego Lagat's mother is also related to Moi. So he also treats Moi as his maternal uncle. So Ouko trying to meet Peter Kibiego Lagat in Kericho, the purpose was to go and tell him, Ongea na mjomba yako. That was the purpose. So when he went to visit uh, Peter Kibiego Lagat in Kericho, our people knew and they were waiting. So he went to Kericho, talked to Peter Kibiego Lagat. Whatever they talked, there were two. On the way back, he underwent hostile surveillance. Now, hostile surveillance, I can talk of it briefly in two. It happened to Bishop Muge on his way to Busia and back. So, uh, and I've also covered uh, in my tapes uh, hostile surveillance. So please watch hostile surveillance. Uh, hostile surveillance leads you to have an accident just like Muge had. And it happened to uh, Robert Oko on his way back to Kisumu. When he had an accident, him being a, a minister for foreign affairs or a member of the cabinet, and uh, NSAC, he knew he had, uh, he had a few uh, intelligence briefings and training. So he knew that uh, that was an, uh, may have been uh, an assassination attempt. So he looked around. The vehicle that was nearby was a lorry, uh, was a tractor. 
So he boarded that tractor and requested the tractor driver to take him to Aga Khan Hospital in Kisumu for treatment. From this place of accident to Kisumu is uh, very far. And it becomes even far using a tractor. So uh, I told Gorsungu, the parliamentary select committee, that that driver must be dead because it was assumed that for Ouko to move with all the time with that driver from the scene of accident, you know, it is near Kericho. Now, I want you, if you, if you visit those places or come from those places, to board a, a vehicle from Ahero Nyando, go to Kisumu, see how far it is, and then assume that you have a tractor from the scene of accident to uh, Kisumu. I think you'll take double the time. So I assured Gorsungu and the parliamentary select committee that that driver must be dead. You kill him so that if he has information or doesn't have information, you don't take chances. Uh, I've explained the accident. Kikuyu say, Wago Shokane Oleaga Modo, the second people he saw were the prominent Luo people. And they told him, they gave him a condition that meeting you will be risky. You know that the intelligence have, gets everybody. Your secretary spies on you. Your domestic employees spy on you. Everybody spies on you. If we have to visit you at, at night, we want to visit you at night where people are not seen. We want to visit you at your home. Well, you know, me meeting you, meeting you in a hotel, people will see. So we meet you at your royal home. We want to meet you where your domestic employees are not there. We don't want your domestic employees to go. You know, domestic employees are only to go and see the nearest special branch handler and tell them Oko was visited by A, B, C, D. So Oko was requested for us to come Make sure that you are alone in the home. But something happened. Uh, Oyugi, sus not Oyugi, Anguka suspected something may cook up later. So he changed his plans and sent his bodyguard and his driver and his vehicle to go and collect Ouko. You know, Ouko seeing vehicles, familiar vehicles, he'll open the gate. So that is why Anguka was in Nakuru. And those days, there is this lady who recently was head of the Matilda Waswa. She was a deal in... Uh, so she, her work was to distribute this uh, public meeting. She was working in the DO's office, DC's office, and her work was to issue... Uh, if you have a public, uh, if you have a gathering, you get it. So, Anguka, by virtue of being the DC, he opened the file that had all the public meetings at night and he visited that as an alibi. Uh, so, we are back to Koru. In Koru, Oko was uh, expecting people. So, he called his workers. And his workers had stayed for several months without pay for various reasons. Those people, even who work for prominent people today, they'll tell you that they work for three or four months without pay, and they are given three or four months pay in lump sum. Furthermore, if you're working for a person like Ouko, he pays fees for your students, for your kids, he pays uh, your medical whatever. You stay in the compound, you eat there, you don't pay rent, so they, you understand. So he, uh, the, the people were paid all their money and they were given a few days off. You don't even remember that all of you are leaving because everybody is called to, to the room alone. It's told to discuss your problems, you are told whatever. You are given your three or four month salary. You come up with a cooked story. Unajua pia mimi ni nahivi nahivi. He says, oh, so you want maybe some more money you are given and then you are told okay be away for 
so many days. So they left for so many days. When they left for so many days, uh, we Africans, whenever, uh, even right now, Nikitembea Mtwani Rushe 10,000, I f immediately I, I become, I feel like having a, f a, a ceremony. So Selina, uh, instead of going away, Selina where? She organized for people to come. I mean, for a few friends to maybe have some bite and drink. And when they were having a bite and drink, she went out and uh, observed something. And that one, I'll come to that, what she observed. Uh, so Ouko felt that he was alone. Uh, he didn't know that Selina were and uh, remained. But we religious detectives will tell you that no crime is perfect. So Uko was remaining alone. He was in pajamas and a torch and a walking stick where, where he wanted a Somali sword. Eh? He wanted to go and open the gate for the Luo leader so that they come and meet him and discuss how they can counter the propaganda against him. When he opened the gate, seeing, seeing familiar vehicles, he didn't see the familiar Luo leaders. He saw GSU personnel armed with rifles. He tried to run away, and they held him, and he tried to make some noise. And that is why, that is the time when Selina had gone out for a short call, and she came back and told those people who were there that Japonj, I'm called Japonj, is not a sponge, but it is a teacher. So Japonj had made vo a sound similar to a goat when it is supposed to be killed. Why didn't she go and find out or anything? Well, as we speak now, she's dead. But uh, maybe, you know when you're in a celebration mood and you don't expect anything, and you're in a celebration, maybe you've taken a few drinks, those things don't come to you. So he was placed in a vehicle and placed in a boot. Then they headed towards Nakur from Kor. Upon reaching, he was placed in the boot. Upon reaching Kericho, upon reaching Kericho, they found that uh, they, they fueled the vehicles. And he, had in a, he was in the boot, he listened, he knew it was a, a place. Uh, he, then he kicked the boot open. And the petrol station attendant, so I don't know what went into the mind of the petrol station. You know, you see somebody in the boot. In Kenya, you don't, this is not Beirut. So you see somebody in the boot, you're shocked. Maybe, maybe you even see he resembles the minister. So, you, And as he was shocked in the millisecond, a pistol was placed on his ear and he was told, just fuel and forget you ever saw such a thing. If you happen to say that, you will die. He did that. The boot was closed again. And between Kericho and Nakuru, uh, it was at night, so Uko was removed from the boot, and he was. they started beating him. Sasa uliko na jifanya nini, uliko na taka nini, such a thing. It's like a mob justice. They beat him there, and that is where he broke his leg. Or they broke his leg. In English they say he broke his leg, but in Kiswahili or African language they say they broke his leg. Then they took him to state house. They went to state house. You know state house, there are so many security details. Uh, majorly, there are, four or, there are five or six groups. Group, the first group at the gate is the G company from... GSU. We used to joke that G stands for GET. Then inside, we have the presidential escort. Presidential escort, whenever the president moves, you can see the vehicles written in red, presidential escort. Then there is the REC company. In those days, nowadays I know there is a lot of CCTV here and there, but those days REC used to be everywhere. They could even hide on trees. And whatever you do in SETA, though, though there were the CCTVs of those days, REC company. So we have counted G company, presidential Scott, REC company. We have the CID. 
they have uh, their own uh, line up there then we have the intelligence they have uh, we had our own line up there and then the military the military were controlled by adc so the everybody was there you, you, the, the other formations can also uh, disclose what happened because they were there but with the special branch there were two inspectors there one was Inspector Wekesa from Misiru, who saw that and told me. But Misiru, uh, Wekesa was also immediately promoted to chief inspector and taken, well, first of all, was taken to Lodwa and made a chief, in, then made, later made a chief inspector. And they said that Lodwa, the head of Lodwa was a chief inspector and the deputy was an inspector. So you cannot have two chief inspectors in Lodwa and one inspector. So he was transferred from Lodwa or to Kajiado as the deputy. On his way back, at a place called Marich Pass, there was a suspicious accident. It is alleged. Now you see, the vehicle was traveling fast, but it is said that the driver saw a squirrel and avoided uh, stepping on a squirrel, and the vehicle rolled, and Wekesa died. Yeah, he died, so. Or was he killed? Uh, Ngarwa died a few years ago. Uh, Inspector Ngarwa Kinyanju is from Limuru. He died recently of a natural cause. Uh, then uh, King Ori was asking me whether there is a natural death or uh, a non-natural death. Now, if you are a gangster and flying squad shoot you, that is not a natural death. If you are hanged in committee, that is not a natural death. But if you die of an or of a normal road accident, or if you die out of sickness, that is a natural death. So Kinyagaro Kinyandui died a natural death, where uh, he was buried in the moor, and nobody mentioned that he is a former spy. Uh, it speaks a lot. Maybe after retiring, he insisted that no references should be made about him. Now, at State House Nakuru, Biot had convinced, and I'll cover that in other episodes, uh, Biot had convinced Moi that um, Oko wanted to overthrow the government. That is why they had gone abroad. I'll cover that. And Oko was more popular than Moi abroad. So that is why. And you see, in foreign countries, we have started that system now. You find that uh, anybody who comes uh, to Kenya, uh, he's a minister or anything, he's called your, your Excellency. In those days, Your Excellency was only referred to four, five people. It was referred to the president, the spouse of the president, the vice president, the spouse of the vice president, and ambassadors and visiting heads of state. But nowadays, in addition, the Tanzanian Minister for Foreign Affairs, he comes to Kenya, you don't call him Right Honorable, you don't call him Honorable, you say Your Excellency. It's a sign of respect. Those things used to happen in those countries before, used to happen. And so when Oko was in America, the preferential treatment, which is covered in another tape, made uh, Oko, when any be what convinced Moi that Oko wanted to overthrow him. So it was a sort of an interrogation. And uh, the differences between Oko and uh, Oko and uh, Biwot, I'll cover it in another tap. So the, the, the uh, uh, Oko's last minutes on earth, he was kneeling with a broken leg. Uh, uh, he was crying. There were several people, more than 18, in that. You know, state house rooms are not like you are Kibira eight by eight. So in that room which was big, a dome-like, uh, we, uh, the, presi the, the president was asking Ouko to, both Ouko and, uh, both Ouko and Moi were convincing uh, Ouko to, to accept, admit that he was planning to overthrow Moi and that he was sorry and he would never do such a thing. But uh, Ouko was crying because of pain and because of false accusation, and, and he was telling Moi that uh, he was a genuine friend and he could not overthrow Moi. Then uh, Biwot pretended 
Biwoto pretended to be annoyed, took out a pistol, shot Ouko uh, in one side and Ouko died. That is, and, and nobody tells me how he was carried all the way from State House to Gotalila. Nobody has ever told me that. Uh, and that is uh, when he was at Gotalila. He was then uh, seen by a Shamba boy called Shikuku. I do believe that Shikuku m may be alive, or if he has died, then he must have died a long time later, but under an assumed name. Uh, when, we were, when I was talking to the Gorsungu Commission, I, I was insisting that uh, Selina Were was alive, and Gorsungu told me that they had gone to her place and they had found a grave with the name Selina Were, showing that she was, she was dead. And I told Gorsungu that, did you exhume the body and find that um, it was Selina Were? She said, no, they did a lot, some investigation, and Selina Were came out and... Uh, said she was alive. What I'm trying to say is that uh, some people went home, buried banana whatever, and then tried to show that they are dead so that they are not followed. Then that is what followed and uh, he was buried. Kindly watch other episodes, especially those related to Ouko, because uh, I have segmented it into I started with this episode where uh, from the all, esp esp all episodes were, are important because they are interlinked just like a cog, like a, a wheel. Each, I, each is a cog of each, cog of each other. Each is important. But I, I, I made a conclusion that maybe the viewers would want to know from JKIA to the grave. Then from there, I'll segment uh, episodes each and each. In your comment section, you can ask questions so that I include them in future recordings.